Now that we've covered the basics of periodic functions, we're going to begin looking at individual functions themselves. And to start this, we're going to be looking at the sine function. Now when going to graph the sine function, we're going to be using the unit circle and building off the idea that when we have a point on the unit circle, that point has coordinates that are equivalent to the cosine of the angle theta and the sine of the angle theta. So as we pick values around this circle, if we take their y coordinate, that will give us the value of the sine function. So to begin with, let's start at zero. If we have zero degrees, we are here at the point one zero. So our first coordinate is zero zero when we look at the sine function. Then as we move to pi over six, the coordinate here is radical two over two, one half. Again, the only part we care about is that y value, so I'm just putting it. So at pi six, we get one half. Then we move to pi fourths, and both the x and y coordinates are radical two over two, which is about 0.7. Till we get up to pi halves, which is 90 degrees, and our coordinate is zero, one. So at pi halves, we are at one. Then, as we move towards the other side, our y values will start to decrease. And they will decrease at the same rate that they had increased on the previous side. Until we are on the negative side of the x-axis at the point negative one, zero. Then we will repeat the same values, but we will be diving into negatives. So at 5 pi 6, or sorry, 7 pi 6, also known as 210 degrees, we will be at a negative one half for our y value. Then we'll move to a negative radical two over two. And then when we're on the negative y axis, we'll be at the point zero negative one. And then we will slowly increase as we make our way back to two pi or zero where we will end up at zero again. So this function, once we have all the pieces and we plot it out, will run a cycle such as this. That is your basic sine wave on the interval from zero to two pi. So whenever somebody talks about a sine wave, this is what they mean. This is y equals the sine of theta. Now just like with other families of functions we can do transformations on this. Let's talk about a couple of those basic transformations. If we were to take the basic sine function like what we have here, just what we constructed a moment ago, and start manipulating the unit circle. What if instead of it being a one unit circle it was a two unit circle? So we had a radius of two what we would take is y equals 2 sine of theta. In which case, instead of stopping at 1, our graph would continue up to a value of 2, and that is where we would have our maximum value. But it would also continue down to a negative 2, and that's where we'd have our minimum value. All values of the sine function would be doubled. So we'd come up to here, we'd pass back through the same zero, we'd end there and continue on. So by putting a multiplier in front of our sine function, we stretch our graph vertically. 
Next, what if we were to manipulate how quickly we move around our circle? What if we were to move at one-third the speed? So what if we took y equals 2 sine of one-third theta? Well, if we moved a third of the speed, then whatever our theta value is, we would multiply it by one-third. So when we got to pi halves, pi halves divided by 3 is pi 6, and we'd only end up here. So at pi halves, on our graph, we would only be at 1 half instead of 1. At pi, we'd be at pi thirds, which would put us about here, same place it was, but we're still on the way up. Sorry, not there. At pi, we would be at pi thirds. We'd have to get all the way out to 3 halves pi, dividing it by 3 to get to where pi halves normally is, and we would end up with a graph that would be doing this. So at 2 pi, we'd be at 2 pi thirds, we'd end up there, and we'd be starting our way back down. So by putting a value in this position as a multiplier on, sorry, we had a, a value of 1, as a multiplier on our theta, it manipulates the horizontal stretch. Now the way that this works exactly is that our parent function is y equals a times the sine of b theta. a is our magnitude or our amplitude. If a is positive, it will open up, it will start by climbing and then falling. If a is negative, it would reverse this so it would fall first and then climb. And then as we look at b, it tells us how many cycles there are from 0 to 2 pi. Or, if we were to change the thinking of that, 2 pi divided by b is the period. So, in the example I gave, our b was 1 third, 2, di 2 pi divided by a third, 2 pi divided by 1 third. Dividing a fraction by a fraction, you multiply by the reciprocal. So we have 2 pi over 1 times 3 over 1. Our period was becoming 6 pi. And as you can see, at 2 pi in our graph, we were only about a third of the way done. So it would take all the way up to 6 pi to complete this. When you have to construct graphs, there are typically two different requests that are given. Either one, graph one cycle, or two, graph it on a specific interval. Let's get a little bit of practice at graphing some of these functions. So we're going to sketch the graphs of the following functions on the interval from 0 to 2 pi. So part of this is we're going to be finding out what our amplitude is and our period. So our amplitude for our first one is the multiplier in front of our sign. No multiplier is shown, so it's assumed to be 1. Next, our period is 2 pi divided by b. And if you look, our b value is pi, so 2 pi divided by pi is simply 2. So we're going to have to take this information and interpret it out to find out where exactly the number 2 is located at. And knowing the values of pi, since pi is 3.14, 2 would be about 2 thirds of pi. So that means if we look on our graph, we already have pi halves, pi, 3 pi halves, and 2 pi. 2 pi, uh, 2 thirds pi is going to be the first mark right after it. We're going to start here and end our cycle here. Now our amplitude is only 1, so I'm going to go up two lines and call that 1, down two lines, call that negative 1, sorry, negative 1. And now between these, 
halfway between my start and my finish, if you remember the graph, we have another zero. Then we went from zero to maximum, zero, minimum, zero. So halfway between the first two zeros is a maximum. And halfway between the next two zeros is my minimum. And this will continue as we move down the graph. And using the lines that we have, understanding they're going to be a little bit off in my interpretation, I will get a function that looks like this. And from that, we have now graphed the sine of pi theta. Next, moving on to our second function, the opposite of sine pi halves theta. So our first order of business is what is our amplitude? And the amplitude is the multiplier in front of sine. In this case, it's negative 1, meaning our graph will be reflected across the x-axis. Next, what is our period? Our period is 2 pi divided by b. And b is pi halves, so which 2 pi divided by pi halves is simply 4. So, going again off of what we know of the values of pi are going to be about one mark past where pi is located at. Halfway in between those two, actually, sorry, scratch that, will be about two marks because every two marks is about almost equivalent to one. Halfway between those two, we will have another zero. And this time, instead of going zero max, zero min, because our amplitude is negative one, we're going to flip this over the x-axis as a reflection. So our minimum will be negative 1 and our maximum will be 1 and those will occur at staggering locations halfway between our other values. So we will end up with a graph that looks approximately like this. Again as being part of just a rough sketch. Remember the word sketch means a close approximation of what it looks like. It doesn't have to be the most detailed. Now moving on, let's take a look at the graph of 4 sine 1 half theta. First we find our amplitude and period. And our amplitude is that front multiplier, in this case 4. So since we have 4 lines here on our graph, we'll go up to 4 and down to negative 4 with each line being 1. Then our period is 2 pi divided by b, which is 1 half. 2 pi divided by 1 half is 4 pi. So that means on our interval from 0 to 2 pi, we're only going to get half of a cycle. So our 0 will be located at 0. Our end of cycle would be at 4 pi with our halfway point at 2 pi. And we will hit our maximum halfway between those two at pi. So in this interval, we are only going to get half of a cycle. Lastly, let's look at the sine, no, one half sine of two theta. So our amplitude is going to be one half. Our period will be 2 pi divided by b, which is 2. So every pi, we will do a full period. So setting our scale, if we call that 1 half, a negative 1 half, between 0 and pi, we will have a full cycle halfway at pi halves. And at every pi halves, we will have a 0. And this one will open up just like before, with a maximum or minimum alternating halfway between these zeros at the quarter pies. So when we connect it, we get this for our graph. So a lot of little steps here to keep in mind. The important thing is find that amplitude and that period. Now what happens when we have to interpret from an existing graph? 
Here we have two existing graphs, and we're going to go through and find what the equations are that build them. So our first one, first thing we have to do is figure out what the amplitude is. This first graph maximizes out halfway between the 1 and the 2. So our maximum is 3 halves if we're working with fractions, or we could go 1 and 5 tenths if we're working in decimal. Next, we need to interpret out the period. Our period, we reach half a cycle at pi halves, that means we reach a full cycle at pi. And that is going to be equal to 2 pi divided by b. What would b have to exist as in order so that 2 pi divided by b is simply pi? That means that b equals 2. 2 pi divided by 2 is simply pi. Now, taking that and writing our equation, y equals 3 halves of sine 2 theta. Next, let's do the same thing for the second graph. Let's find our amplitude and our period. The amplitude, each line in our scale here, Two lines represents two, so each line represents one, and it maximizes out at a value of three. So our amplitude is three. It does open up the first time, so that means that it is a positive three. Next, our period. Our period, if we were to finish filling in, we have two and four, so our period is four. Again, that is equal to 2 pi divided by b. So if we multiply both sides by b, we get 4b equals 2 pi. Divide by 4, b equals 4 pi, or 2 pi fourths, which is simply pi halves. Now, substitute into our equation, y is equal to 3 sine of pi halves theta and we can write the equations from what we see. Writing the equations, as you just witnessed, is sometimes a lot easier than graphing them ourselves, but the material is there, and we need to be able to work it both ways. A lot of new material in here, and ways of constructing. Make sure you have this, because we're going to be using it to build cosine and tangent functions as well.